Hello, and welcome back to the Adult Bible Study with First Baptist Church of Ray City. For those of you who are new, my name is Charles, and I'm one of our associate pastors, and it is a privilege that we get to have to dive back in to the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 2, verse 16 through 23. I hope you enjoy today's Bible study. Therefore, Paul starts this section by tying it back to the previous section, and he does this through the word, therefore. So we need to see this word as saying, since Jesus, tying it back to Colossians 2, 9, since Jesus, in whom the entire fullness of God's nature dwells bodily, and then Colossians 2, 14 and 15, since he, Jesus, erased the certificate of debt with its obligations that was against us and opposed to us and did this by taking it away and nailing it to the cross. And he who has done all of this, who's the, whose entire fullness of God's nature dwells and who erased the certificate of debt, he also disarmed the rulers and authorities over you in this action. This is what is entailed in the word, therefore. So because of all of this, therefore, do not let anyone judge you in regards to food and drink or in matters of festival or a new moon or a Sabbath day. In the false teaching that was in the Colossian church, people believed that taking certain Jewish food taboos and rigid observance of special days would bring fullness paying attention to what you eat and what you drink, and then paying attention to the festival days and a new moon or a Sabbath day. These days, they brought fullness. Yet, fullness, as Paul is contending here, is not found in any of these rituals, but is found wholly in Jesus Christ, who is the substance. Verse 17, these are a shadow of what was to come. As Jesus told us in Matthew 5, 17, he or I being Jesus, he did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. Christ fulfills it because the law is only a shadow. That is an image that's cast by the object, namely the substance that is Christ. And Hebrews 10 picks this up and it tells us also, Therefore, since the law has only a shadow of the good thing to come and not the reality itself of those things, it can never perfect the worshipers by the same sacrifices they continually offer year after year. Since the law is only a shadow, and it's a shadow of only Christ and the purifying work that He did that we saw Paul argue there in 2, 9 through 15, we are to see that Christ is that substance. Just as in the time of the Colossians, it is easy for you and me to heap upon ourselves other rules and regulations on how we are to live our life. What we must see is that these acts do not purify us. We can add nothing to our own righteousness because Christ Jesus, as Paul has argued, is the only purifying agent that can cleanse us from our sins through erasing our certificate of debt by nailing it to the cross in his body. Since Christ is the only thing that can purify us, Paul argues that adding any other form of spirituality will not do. Let no one condemn you. The idea Paul is getting at with the word condemn is where someone casts judgment upon another person. It takes from the sports language of the time, and it speaks of a person like a referee or an umpire who decides and gives judgment against another. Paul wanted his readers to see that believers who turn from faithfully following Christ are people robbed or condemned of the reward that they would have had because they're chasing after other things like delighting in aesthetic practices. And these aesthetic practices are tied to self-denial and describe fasting and other bodily disciplines of self-denying fashion in Judaism and other religions within that time period. 
But this is not the only practice that the false teachers were trying to pull people towards. They also wanted people to worship the angels and to access vi the visionary realm, claiming to access these visionary realms. The false teachers were also heaping this upon their devotees. They told their followers that mystical visions, access to the visionary realm, and other more profound aesthetic experiences, typically in the form of worshiping the angels or worshiping alongside of the angels, were necessary to make one genuinely spiritual. We need to see that striving for a more significant spiritual experience through self-denial or any other form of religion is in reality robbing us of the fullness that we have in Christ. Such people are inflated by empty notions of their own spiritual minds. In fact, all the talk about spiritual things or spiritualities is unspiritual unless at the center of spirituality is the worship of Christ and what He has done on a cross. This is the point Paul is making in the next verse. He, being those individuals who are, are arguing for these kind of practices, does not hold on to the head from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and tendons, grows with growth from God. Only when Christ is at the center of worship and spirituality is the body of Christ holding to its head, its source, its beginning. And therefore, the whole body is nourished, is held together, and is filled full so that it may grow with a growth that can only be given by God on high. And from here, Paul reminds the believers in Colossae of the reality that they died to the world when they found themselves knit and held together and nourished in Christ with a growth that can only be given by and from God. If you die with Christ to the elements of this world, why do you live as if you still belong to the world? Paul's point in asking this question is that believers are set free from the bondage to this world, knowing that as he argues in Romans 6.6, 6, we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be rendered powerless so that we may no longer be enslaved to sin. Since people who have died with Christ have died to sin being crucified with him and rendering the body of sin powerless, we are now alive to God in Christ. And we know that being alive in Christ means no longer living under the law, but under grace. Therefore, Paul asked that question, why do you submit to regulations? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. Since believers are no longer under the law, but under grace, not bound by the regulations of the law, they are to submit their bodies to God as instruments for righteousness. Therefore, they are to live as people set apart for kingdom work and the proclamation of the gospel because Christ is central. Not rules like do not handle, do not taste, do not touch, and not experiences like the aesthetic practices and worship of angels or visionary experiences, none of those things are central. What is central is Christ. And since the law is just a shadow of the substance of Christ, this means that the law is temporary. This is what Paul gets at with the next verse in verse 22. All these regulations refer to what is destined to perish by being used up. Everything is destined to die except for Christ and those who are found in Him. This includes rules and authorities and anything that was used in the sacrificial system to try and make one pure. None of these things make somebody pure. In fact, they are human commands and doctrines. It is extremely easy to get wrapped up in false teaching and half-truths. But believers must focus themselves on the central object of Christian faith. That is Christ Jesus, who is the only thing that can erase the certificate of death that was held against us. For all these have a reputation for wisdom 
all of those things that we have spoken of in the last verse, all of these different ways of trying to become spiritual through aesthetics and other spiritual experiences, all of these appear to have wisdom. But in reality, they're just promoting self-made religion and false humility and severe treatment of the body. What we see is they are lacking and are merely a facade of true wisdom, which is found only in Jesus. For they, that is these other forms of religion, are not of any value in curbing self-indulgence. The thing these religions could not touch is personal self-indulgence. Desires of which we think of ourselves over anything and everything else. The desire to please ourselves, when in reality the only way that we can find true peace and true joy is in the substance that purifies us, Christ Jesus. If we are to overcome and conquer our sinful nature, there is only one way. Christ has to be the center focal point of our lives. If it were not for Him, that certificate of debt would still be in our hands, and we would have no hope. So thanks be to God for sending His Son so we might be free to worship Him in spirit and in truth. I'm Charles. This has been the Adult Bible Study with First Baptist Church of Ray City, and I look forward to studying again with you next time.